what longevity practices do you incorporate into your daily life? Well, before I jump into the foods, I want to I want to dive into exercise because when you look at the clinical research, um, the studies on exercise are just as efficacious as what you eat when it comes to longevity. So movement is really important. There are really three forms of movement you want to focus on if you want to live a long time. Strength, stamina, and stability. When it comes to strength, it's not having just big muscles. It's more just being strong. It's like if you if you want to pick up your grandkids when you're in your 70s off the floor, you know, that's the equivalent of, let's say it's, you know, let's say it's a 25 pound kettlebell. Can you do a sumo, like, like a squat, squat down with your back, not rounded, grab a kettlebell off the floor and lift it back up. Okay. So you need that sort of functional strength if you want to live a long time. So for myself, I really am not in the phase now where I'm trying to lift to build bigger muscles. I'm trying to lift to live longer, uh, and improve my longevity. So I do a lot of exercises with kettlebells, a lot of functional movements of things like that. Some of the most important movements are hip hinges where you're sort of, again, uh, hip hinging or doing, uh, it's, it's a version of a squat or, or, or what could be a deadlift without weight, but you're hinging at your hips. You're, you're grabbing something like a kettlebell and coming back up. That's one of the most important movements. Another very important movement is pulling, whether it be a pull up or a row with a dumbbell, whatever it is. That's an important movement to have. Pushing movements could be a push up or just holding a plank in that position as well. Um, is very important. So those are some of the ones you probably want to think about uh, areas of strength there you want to build. And then stamina, that's going for a really brisk walk. Okay, so that's very important. And then being able to do a little bit of, if you want to do something that is going to help increase your VO2 max, and that's going really hard between a minute to four minutes, uh, and then resting for that equivalent amount of time. That could be jogging at a track and walking for the same amount of time. It could be getting on a spin bike like a Peloton and doing uh, interval training. Um you know, there's a lot of different ways, or it could be in the pool doing this, depending on your joint health. But I would say you want to build strength, stamina, and the other big thing is stability. And you're going to tend to build stability through what I talked about earlier, doing those exercises that are functional movement related, where you're really working on doing things very thoughtful. Uh, and and there are, if, if you do want to increase stability, there are a couple great ways to train for this. There's one called DNS. Um, it's really training your nerve system. It's starting out like you're a baby. There's another one called PRI, Postural Restoration Institute. Um, but basically, all that being said, if you want to live a long time, work on strength with weights, work on stamina, doing that sort of brisk walking uh, sort of exercise with a little bit of sort of that hit training, um, and then do a little bit of stability. It's basically, stability is balance. One of the number one reasons why uh, elderly people uh, can die uh, is and and suddenly if there's a slip and fall, okay, lack of stability. It's you're stepping off a step that's a little bit steeper than you thought, right? Broken hips. I mean, clinically, that's something that happens very frequently. Strength, st- stamina, and stability slash balance. Being able to stand on one foot for thirty seconds that will help increase your lifespan. Now, in terms of supplements. Uh, what I try and get are most of them in food form. So let me get into foods first, and then I'll talk about supplements. So when you look at longevity, and I think this is both demonstrated by sort of the Eastern mindset of ancient Asian medicine, as well as Western medicine today of what foods best promote longevity. Today, we hear of a lot of diets like a Mediterranean diet or an Okinawan diet being best for longevity. And the foods I'm going to share with you tend to fall in these categories, but you want to do foods that are both nutri- nutrient dense, uh, easy to digest, and have some sort of benefits f- for helping regenerate your cells. By the way, that's the key to longevity: that you have really good, you slow cellular breakdown, and you increase cellular regeneration. And you do that in three ways: you do it by um, getting more energy to your cells. So, getting good sleep at night is critical. 
So sleep and stress being lowered or how you react to stress. That's number one for longevity. Number two is you got to reduce cellular uh, poisons, right? We're, we're constantly have these toxins that we're exposed to and we, and we have to limit that. And the other one is making sure your body has the right building blocks to regenerate your cell walls and your body's mitochondria, which is the energy, sort of the engine of your cell. So we need to have certain nutrients to do that. So here are the top foods that are going to support cellular prevent cellular breakdown, which, which is basically when cells divide and break down, that shortens your telomeres, which reduces your lifespan. You want to keep those telomeres long. And so here are some things you can do. Number one, uh, you want to get a moderate amount of uh, bone broth, red meat, wild fish. And so you want to get some healthy quality protein in your diet because having more muscle mass and strength is going to help you live longer. The next one is going to be organ meats. Again, liver, kidney, heart, doing those organs is helpful. Healthy fats, olives in particular, help increase lifespan because they have a unique type of antioxidant called a polyphenol. And so getting olives and extra virgin olive oil, by the way, when you're buying olive oil, it should be expensive. Because most olive oil today, it's it's filtered and watered down. By the way, I did a podcast episode years ago. I remember this. And I had an expert on olive oil come in, and, he, and they did a study at a university. So this wasn't a, a survey or an idea. This was an actual study. And they found that most things that are labeled olive oil are not purely olive oil. Most of the time, they're laced with canola oil or vegetable oil, or the olives were uh, not fully ripened. And so there are major issues. And I want to say it was close to 70%. I mean, really, when you look at the studies, it really was astounding. So just know you want to get, when you taste olive oil, it should be herbaceous. It should be strong. It should be like herbs bursting in your mouth. It should taste almost a little green. And so, and I know I just said something should taste like a color, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Okay. It should be herbaceous. Okay. Uh, so, but, but olives are a great longevity food. Um, avocados are great. Coconut is another great, but those are so my three favorite healthy fat sources when it comes to longevity, along with probably something like I mentioned earlier, wild caught salmon or fish that has those omega-3 fatty acids. The next would be onions and garlic. You know, onions are very high in a compound called quercetin. Quercetin is oftentimes found in longevity formulas. It really helps modulate your immune system, also helps with uh, the health of your body's mitochondria, repair of your uh, those cellular engines. Pomegranates are probably the number one fruit or one of the top fruits. The reason is they contain a compound called allergic acid, okay? And allergic acid also turns into a product or compound that's popular today called urolithin A. Now, most people don't fully digest this allergic acid, and so they're not fully getting this urolithin A uh, that helps support longevity. But again, pomegranates in particular are a very, very incredible longevity food because of all of this allergic acid and antioxidants, all the fiber. So that's probably the top one of the top things I could mention here. Next would be berries, of course. I think you'd be recognized this. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. And in Chinese medicine, goji berries were known as being the top berry for anti-aging. And all of these berries have a number of things. In fact, some of these berries have, uh, like blueberries have resveratrol, which, which really slows the a- a- aging process. Anthocyanins, which are found in blueberries and cranberries and some of those berries. And so you do want to get a lot of berries in your diet because they sort of reduce that free radical damage and they protect your cells from, and those telomeres from being shortened. The next is going to be vegetables, right? Uh, lutein, xanthine, a lot of those compounds in there will help slow the aging process. Mushrooms are fantastic. Well, listen, here's why mushrooms are so powerful. They contain a very, very unique compound called beta-glucans, which help support cellular communication. One of the reasons why you age more quickly than you want to, and if you're one of those people out there and, and you want to reduce the wrinkles, you want to put them off as long as possible, or the age spots, or just generally you care less about what you look, you just want to feel younger and be working out still, playing with your grandkids in your 80s and 90s. If that's you, mushrooms are amazing because what they do is they support cellular communication. One of the reasons why you don't heal, if you have a cut that is taking longer to heal, if your immune system or you're, it's taking you a long time to overcome a virus or you're not beating it, if you're not beating hypothyroidism or diabetes, one of the reasons why is your cells have lost the ability to fully communicate. Now, this happens with type with, with diabetes, right? You have these insulin, these receptor sites that 
essentially become deaf because all of the sugar starts to burn them out. But but that's a signaling issue. That's a cellular communication issue where those cells of the pancreas are no longer hearing or receiving the messages from the other cells of the body. Mushrooms help repair and fix this. And so they also tell your body to send stem cells or growth factors or certain nutrients to areas to repair and create a whole new, new healthy cell. And so if you want to heal and live a long time, this is why mushrooms are the most prized food in traditional Chinese medicine for longevity. Reishi mushrooms, shiitake, maitake, oyster mushrooms, they all contain these beta-glucans that help with this cellular communication, improving longevity. Also, many mushrooms have other compounds which act as adaptogens to lower stress hormones like reishi mushroom does or to charge your cellular battery and strengthen your mitochondria like cordyceps mushrooms. And so mushrooms, and here's what I would say is, hey, if you're grilling up a burger, buy some mushrooms like shiitake and oyster or some of those wild mushrooms or maitake and, you know, fry them up in a little bit of coconut oil and, and have those with your burger. If you're making a, a soup, add some mushrooms to it. But getting mushrooms and onions on a regular basis, loads and loads of benefits there. And those go great with a lot of different food dishes, just in terms of your own enjoyment. A few, a few last things here, and then I'll get to the next question that is just so important for you living a long time. And if you're one of those people, again, you want to live to be 100 years old and healthy. Or here's the thing. Let's say, because I here, here's what's crazy. I did a social media post. This was about six months ago. And I said, here are some things you need to do to live to be, to, to live to be a centurion. You know the most common comment I got from a certain group of people? I don't want to live to be 100. Now, let me, let me ask you this. If you felt like you were 25 years old and you were 100 years old, would you say that? Would you say, well, I don't want to live to be 100? You wouldn't. No, it's because pain and the breakdown as we age and just not feeling well, or maybe you saw a family member suffer, suffer with dementia, right? There's a lot of pain there. And so what I would say is, here's the thing. Today, we're seeing this more than ever before. You can feel like you're in your 50s if you're 80, if you follow these longevity practices like I'm sharing here couple more things. Honey is fantastic. Um, don't do too much of it, just a little, a teaspoon or so of raw local honey, Manuka honey, uh, especially if you can get it as royal jelly. If you can buy honey that has royal jelly in it, that's what the queen bee uses for and consumes for increasing her lifespan, which is much greater. I believe it's three times longer than other bees in the beehive. <clears throat> it's very, very good. So getting some honey slash royal jelly. And there's other foods that are great, figs and walnuts and, and some others that would be good for longevity. But this list here are some of the best. And in terms of supplementation, again, getting some of those super fruits could be goji berry powder, maki, those sort of things, like acai, uh, getting greens in your powder, like super greens, like spirulina and chlorella. Um, NMN powder, that's a form of NAD, which is really a, 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 it's very similar to niacin, vitamin B3, but it's the most, people believe it's probably the most convertible, NR or NMN both. Um, astragalus, reishi mushroom, these are probably some of the best longevity supplements, or, and so look out for things with those ingredients that will help you live longer. Um, let me go through the full list here, though. You know, allergic acid from pomegranate, reishi mushroom, ginseng in Chinese medicine is known. And you shouldn't, you really shouldn't use ginseng till you're probably in your 60s. Unless you're sick, then you should, at least at, as, a, as a higher dose. But ginseng is great for longevity. Green tea, matcha, it contains a compound called EGCG. I mentioned goji berry, faux tea for men, very good for anti aging. Um, resveratrol, which is found in grape skins in Japanese, knotweed, ashwagandha, turmeric, and then don kwai for women. And in terms of nutrients, zinc and vitamin D, also important for longevity. 